Yeah, good day all. And today's topic is going to be how we can derive the, the formulas of Sizak Newton. See, so we have basically four formulas which we are going to derive as soon as possible. But before going to that, there are certain things which we must have to take into. One, then, then we must have to know any objects which you consider in form of Newton's formulas or the equations or in deriving the equations of, of Sizak Newton. One of the things we have to consider, firstly, an object or a particle body must be in motion. When the object is in motion, or the particle is in motion, or the, or the, or the body is in motion, so you see, it's, we have to relate it to Isaac Newton's theory. And the second point again, an object must be in uniform acceleration. So, the, so it's simply, the, simply the, the acceleration there must be uniform. So those are the two cases. In another form, we can add again forces which you consider in, in deriving in deriving in deriving Newton's equation. We refer them to be unbalanced forces. We have unbalanced forces. It's simply when the upward forces are totally different to the downward forces, or when the when the forward forces might be different to the backward forces. So refer them to be unbalanced forces. So we have balanced forces and unbalanced forces. So periodically or particularly in this case, the forces we are going to consider are unbalanced. Totally. So for a scenario, let's say if I'm if I want to drive a car, the moment I get inside that car, since the car is stationary, it simply means it simply means the, the speed, the initial speed is zero. And there is no time spent when the object is in motion. So the moment I start to move, we have what we call an initial speed or a starting speed or a starting velocity. So we have to consider those things. The moment the car moves takes a certain speed, it's the same as the initial. The moment it takes a change, what brought the change, it simply means that there's friction. The moment you, you, you accelerate, like, a, like when you're riding a bicycle, the moment you pedal, you take one or two pedaling, it simply means you added, you added the acceleration. And, 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 and the acceleration at that particular form is totally uniform. You see? So those are the things we have to consider. So, so what are the quantities you might consider in deriving this equation? One of the quantities will be the time. We need to consider the time. The time taken for a body or an object to move from one point to another. The other quantity we need to consider, we also need to consider the total distance covered. Because like when you move from point A to point B, there is going to be a distance cover. The other quantity we need also to consider is the speed or the velocity. You see, And these two words normally, normally will disturb us. You see, how can we be able to differentiate speed or, 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 or velocity? These two words are totally confusing. Although they have their similarities, but how we can be able to differentiate them clearly? Because in taking note of their similarities, one of their similarity be one of the similar one of the similarity between speed and velocity. One speed, right? Both speed and velocity, they both have the same dimension, which is L T raised to the power minus one. Both speed and velocity, they both have the same units, which is meters per second. Or we can consider again another unit. And both speed and velocity both have magnitude. You see, both speed and velocity, they are both quantities. So we have four basic similarities between these two quantities. You see, so what about their basic difference? Like, apart from the direction, the basic difference, like, say, if I'm driving a car from Freetown to Lonsa, or from Freetown to Bo, or from Freetown to Kenem, or from Freetown to McKinney, right so definitely i've shown my direction because i'm moving from free town which is point a which is a coordinate point and moving to another point which is point b so therefore clearly there is a direction specified you see but if i just say i just move from one point to another we are in you don't show where you are coming from and you don't show where you are going so it simply means it's not a vector so when the direction is clearly specified we find it to be a vector now, if I move from Freetown to McKinney and covers a distance of five meters and uh, cover a value of five meters per second, you see, that's five meters per second. Is it a scalar quantity or a vector quantity? Since you are moving from Freetown to McKinney, Freetown to McKinney clearly shows that this is a vector quantity because you have shown the points where you are coming from and you also indicated your you have also shown the place where you are going to so it simply means it's a vector quantity 
and the magnitude given now will tell you which type of quantity is that since you have five meters per second so therefore that's five meters per second it's not a speed but it's a velocity because velocity is a vector quantity it has both magnitude and direction because the five meters per second there is the magnitude where the direction from Makini to Bo or from Makini to Kenema or from Makini to, to Mac, uh, from Freetown to Makini, those those two places show show you the 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 the, the magnitude. And the value indicated tells you about the magnitude. You see. So from Freetown to Makini is the direction. And if you cover a distance of 10 meters, that 10 meters is the quantity. And which type of quantity is displacement? because the, you, have, you have given the direction and the direction plus the magnitude is a vector and the 10 meters there is it's telling us about length any type of length is displacement you see so if i just say i cover the distance of 10 meters full stop nobody knows the direction where you're coming from and where you're going to so that 10 meters is clearly a quantity and that quantity is a scalar quantity because 10 meters there is a magnitude. So since there is no direction, so therefore 10 meters there is distance. So this is just the basic difference between distance and displacement and as well as speed and velocity. When this direction, where you are going to, it's clearly shown, it's indicated, it tells us about velocity or, or vector. When the, 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 the direction which you are moving to is not clearly shown, it tells us about scalar. It can be that distance or, or speed. So these are some of the things we have to take note of. Now, when we derive this basic equation, right? When you derive this basic equations of Isaac Newton, which we have for, let's say the first one is going to be V equals to U plus 80. This is one of the equations. And the next one we are going to derive V squared equals to U squared plus 2AS. And the other one, we have S equals to UT plus half AT square. And we have the last one, S equals to U plus V all over 2, all multiplied by T. These are the four equations of motion. What, are the, what is the indication of this parameter? This S tells tell us about the total distance covered. When you have your bicycle or your car, when you move from one point to another, the total distance covered is what we refer to as S. And this U is the initial speed. The moment you have your bicycle or your car or your, or your bike, the moment you move from one point to another, that, that is the initial speed. It's the starting speed. The moment you change your speed, it's no more initial speed. It's going to be the final speed, which is V. Or it has become the change in speed or change in velocity. You see? Because what's, what's brought about the change in velocity? Because there is, there is simply simply by an acceleration because like because like when you have an acceleration you have change in velocity you see that's the reason that change in velocity is always given as 80 change in velocity always going to be v equals to 80 the moment you have change in velocity simply mean you must you multiply the acceleration that's going that makes the change in velocity by the time you cover because in this case the moment you have change in velocity the time is going to be lesser you see so these are the things you have to take note of and this is the initial speed or the starting speed and this is the final speed and this t is the time taken from one destination to another and the a which we refer to as simply the acceleration so this is just the labeling of the parameters or these quantities or these letters so if we want to derive this equation let's consider a velocity time graph let's say we have this velocity time graph and as we know, the top is labeled as meters per second, and the bottom is time with the unit of seconds. And let's say this is the starting point. This is zero at rest. When the object is at rest, it simply means it starts from zero. The initial speed, whatever, is zero. So now, you get inside your car. You start to move with a velocity. It can be one meter per second, two meters, three, four, five, or whatever. Any meter, that's the initial speed, that's your starting speed. In this case, let's say we don't know the, the starting speed. It can be 5 or 10. Let's say that speed, since we don't know, we label it as U. This is the initial speed, the starting speed. But the moment you move your car with certain steps, right, you must cover a time T. And what is that time? It can be 1 meter, it can be 1 second, 2 seconds, or 10 seconds. Since we don't know, let's say we label it as T. 
So this is going to be the time spent t. So the time you take from here to here is going to be t seconds. So you see, so the time you take from here to here is going to be t seconds. So now, since you have covered this initial speed, the moment you have change in velocity, you know, change in velocity is going to we, we have change in velocity. Change in velocity is brought by is brought by a, a simply the acceleration. The moment you it, the moment you have the acceleration, there's going to be change in velocity. So instead of the object continue this direction, it's going to be change in velocity. You see. So therefore, this line is simply the is simply the acceleration. And this and this acceleration in VT graph, you can also call it the slope of the graph. It's going to be the slope of the graph. You have to take note of that. So therefore. If you accelerate, you change your, 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 your velocity or your, your speed, that's going to be time cover. So the time cover, let's say time cover, cover is going to be t, that from here to here is going to be t. So the time cover from here to here is going to be the same, we assume it will be the same from here to here, time t. Now, so since we have this change in velocity, what's going to be this change in velocity? Let's consider this value. So the change in velocity at this point is going to be, is going, is, is, is going, is going to be the acceleration multiplied by the time taken. So this change in velocity is going to be a times t, which we have as 80. You got that? So the change in velocity is going to be 80. And the other point is, since from the change in velocity here from 0 to u is going to be u minus 0, which we still have as u. So here is u, and here is 80. So in this case, so we have this value. And now, what is the final velocity from the starting point to the ending point? The final velocity from here to here, which we refer to as this is v, so it's going to be this value plus this value. What is this value? It's 80, and this other value is u. So therefore, v will be u plus 80. This is how we have it, simple and straightforward. So after having this value, we might want to consider the distance. What the distance covered from this point to this point, and from this point to this point. So since we have this figure, these two figures, we consider the area of this figure or the distance, we also consider the distance or the area of this figure. Let's say if we consider the area of this figure, you know, in velocity time graph, the total distance covered is always going to be equal to the, the area of the graph, right? So this area of this graph is same as the total distance covered. So since this figure tells us about the rectangle, it's going to be length times the breadth, that the length times the breadth. What is the length? It's t. From here to here is t. Time, what is the breadth? is u. So it's going to be ut. So this total distance covered by this figure is ut. If we consider again this area a2, s2, this is a triangle. Look at it, triangle. So it's going to be half multiplied by the base multiplied by the height, which is half multiplied by the base here is t, and the height here is 80. So this clearly gives us as half a t squared. <laughs> so this gives us as half a t square. So in this case, if we want to know the total distance cover, the total distance cover for this whole figure is going to be s equals to s1 plus s2. S1 is ut, and plus s2, you have it to be half a t square. So this is how we have the total distance covered. S equals to ut plus half at square. I think this is just the graph we are going to use to, to derive the equations of motion. Now, if we use this graph, we want to find this guy. Acceleration. Let's start with acceleration. Acceleration A is, since we have to have the acceleration, we have acceleration because of, there is a change in velocity. So it's going to be change in velocity. Change in velocity divided by time taken. In this case, we are not going to work it as change in velocity. You know, the change in velocity here is 80 divided by time taken is t. t will cancel t. So it's, it's, at the end of the day, we are going to have a equals to a. So we are not going to use this sense. We are going to use the, the other way. So this acceleration is going to be change in velocity over time, over time taken. But since we have the change in velocity to be 80, we are not going to use this value. We are going to consider this value. It's the same thing because this value here is the same as this, but we are not going to use 80. If we use 80, we are, going to, we are just going to show that a equals to a. So in this case, what's going to be the, the change in velocity from here to here? Because this 80 tells us about change in velocity. Let's take note of that. 
And this U is talking about the starting velocity, which we refer to as the initial velocity, which is very simple and straightforward. So the change in velocity, since the object moves start from at rest, from zero to year and from year to year, but this V tell us, because this V is from year to year is V, while from here to year is U. But we want to know from here to here. So it's going to be the total minus this, which is going to be V minus this. It's just like, look at it. It's just like if we have from here to here 10 meters, right? And if this distance is 3 meters, what is going to be this distance? It's going to be 10 minus 3 give us 7. 7. Because 7 plus 3 give us 10. It's the same thing. So since from here to here is V, and we want to know from here to here, but we, but we actually know from here to here to be U, so it's going to be V minus U. So this acceleration is going to be V, let's say it's going to be V minus U divided by T. You see? So now, if we cross multiply A times T is going to be A T, so we have V minus U, that will say V minus U. Or let's just rewrite it as I'm constrained. Okay, it's going to be like this. Yeah. If we cross multiply, we maintain V minus U equals to A T. Well, first was like eight times is going to be 80 right and we rewrite this so since we are looking for v transpose this is negative when it goes to the other side it becomes so we have v equals to u plus 80 so this gives us the first equations the first equation of motion since we have this first equation of motion so we move to the other side but this equation we can also rewrite this we can also make t the subject here if we interchange t and a, t is going to be v minus u divided by a. So it's going to be t equals to v minus u all over a. We can call this to be a. You see. So if we move forward, moving forward to derive the second equation of motion, we consider the total distance covered. The total distance covered through from zero to here to here. We can say total distance, we say distance s distance s is going to be the average velocity the average velocity time the time taken so this distance s now is going to be the average velocity what do you mean by average the average is simply when you have two or more values or numbers and you sum them you divide by the frequency of those numbers an example we have a b c and D as values. So if I want to find the average or the mean of this value, divide, you sum them, plus, plus, plus that A plus this plus this plus this, divide by the frequency. The frequency have one, two, three, four. They are four, you divide by four. The same thing we are going to do here. Since we have two velocities, the initial and the final, the average of this is going to be add U plus V, you count them one, two, you divide by two. This is what we are going to do. So if we do short, so the average velocity is going to be u plus v divided by 2 multiplied by the time t. So this gives us the second equation of motion, which equals to u plus v divided by 2 multiplied by, two, multiplied by the time taken. So if we also move forward to find the other equation, we can also we say s, we use this equation, u plus, what is v? We already have V here to be U plus 80. So we say V is U plus 80 multiplied by this T all divided by 2. This will be equals to U plus U is 2U plus 80 divided by 2 all multiplied by T. You see, we can simplify T times is going to be 2UT plus 80 times is going to be 80 squared divided by 2. See, so in simple sense, if we divide both sides, we have 2ut divided by 2 plus half at squared. We can see that these two will cancel these two. So when these two values cancel, what remains that is ut plus half at squared. So this gives us the third equation of, of motion. So if we move forward again, since we have the third equation of motion, we can also consider the last equation. The last equation of motion will be in this form. So we consider the same equation from this S equals to U plus V all over 2 times T. 
In this case, we have u plus v all over to multiply by t. What is t? And we have t to be here. Which is v minus u all over, all over a. So if we expand now, u times v is going to be uv plus u, no, u times v is uv, u times minus v is minus, u times v is minus u square, v times v is plus v square, and v times u is minus uv divided by 2 times is going to be 2a. If I that uv will cancel minus uv, so we have s equals to minus u square plus v square divided by 2a. You see? So we have this value. So if we continue now, so we can see that we have this value to be s equals to, because this uv will cancel this uv. So it's mean minus, minus u square plus v square divided by 2a. We'll cross multiplied. Of course, but 2a times is going to be 2as. And this is minus u. If we transpose it, it becomes plus u square equals to v square. Therefore, we have v square equals to u square plus 2as. So this is the fourth equation of motion. So we have v square equals to u square plus 2a. So this is the end of the, the derivation of the four formulas or simply the equations of motion. So thank you all and stay blessed. So possibly if you might want to contact me, reach me through by my email. So you can just email me by alpha sky at gmail.com or if you have any any book concern or anything you want to 